Now, from one horror flick to another, only Nightbreed, Clive Barker's new film, complete with a mass of mind-boggling special effects, looks a lot classier than The Blob. We went on location to Pinewood Studios, where the film is in production, and by all accounts, it's even bloodier and gorier than his first feature, Hellraiser. I thought I'd gone to the limits. I hadn't. The Cenobites gave me an experience beyond the limits. Pain and pleasure, indivisible. I'm really interested in making high quality, <clears throat> imaginative entertainment, uh, which is unlike anybody else's high quality imaginative entertainment. That's what's important. I mean, I think that people will come out of this picture and say, well, Clive Barker certainly had his stamp on that. <laughs> My Breed's um, a very dark fantasy movie. It's not a horror movie in the way that Hellraiser was. When it gets violent, it certainly gets violent, but it's not, strictly speaking, a horror movie. Horror movie or not, much of the action in Nightbreed takes place in a typical horror setting, a city of monsters called Midian. Here, Boone, the hero of the story, convinced that he is a killer, seeks refuge amongst the creatures of the underworld. These are the Nightbreed, described by Barker as shapeshifters, night stalkers, and phantoms. But Nightbreed is perhaps most unusual for the appearance of director David Cronenberg, acknowledged master of cinematic horror, in his first major acting role, giving Barker the opportunity to work with the man whose vision of horror has been his greatest influence in film. interesting for me to see me go through this process as an actor as opposed to being a director. Um, Philip Decker is a psychiatrist who, who is uh, more than slightly schizophrenic and at the beginning of the film he, he, he seems to be a very concerned, uh, very stable psychoanalyst who is worried that one of his patients might in fact turn out to be a serial killer. I found them. Somebody stole the corpse, brought it down here. There is no corpse. He's not dead. He was shot. Pump full of bullets. I saw it. I saw it too. But he's alive. And he's killed again. I've approached it to begin with very much like a director, which is not to say that I'm doing any directing at all on the film, because I'm not. But I mean, uh, I know what I look for from my actors' faces in the editing room. Uh, very subtle things usually, uh, uh, a slight shift of expression, a shift of focus of eyes and so on. And because Decker is an extremely um, controlled person, he's, he's, he can't afford to be spontaneous because he has so many secrets to hide, so many things to suppress that if he, if he allows himself to be spontaneous, God knows what will come out. So this works very well for, for my limited range as an actor. It seemed the perfect opportunity. Here was a, a character in the movie who in some ways, in terms of his manner, resembles David's public manner. It seemed perfect, and I think he's extraordinary. The picture is sinister and, again, strangely, darkly witty. Uh, Clive has been very, very uh, cordial <laughs> in his willingness to, uh, to alter things so that it can work well for the actors, and I, I try to do that myself. And uh, so the result is that any difficulty in, in any of the scenes uh, that I have to play is really a question of my own inexperience. Cronenberg's most recent film as director, Dead Ringers, presented a more naturalistic approach to horror. How does Cronenberg distinguish Barker's approach from his own? Um, Clive is, is uh, much more exuberant, I think, in his, in his sense of invention, and he has no qualms about inventing new mythologies and new creatures and so on. Um, I would never have done the Cenobites, for example, in Hellraiser. This is not just not something that I would do, and yet I'm delighted to see them. If there was an Academy Award for most monsters in a movie, Nightbreed would surely win it. Bob Keen and Jeff Portas of Image Animation coordinated creature creation and special effects. We used to have conversations, well, we need 35 creatures for Nightbreed, and it was maybe we need 40, and 
The last official count was 130, but I think we're probably going to be closer to 200 creatures by the end of Nightbreed. We're all in shorthand now, so Clive will say, oh, more nipples, and suddenly more nipples will appear, or he'll be talking in a very much a language we know and understand. These are just a couple of the, uh, the little things that came up. I just t came in one day and said maggot babies. That was his whole terminology. Clive gets a lot of energy and juice out of being very exuberant and inventive and, and really doesn't care about... Well, he sets up another kind of convention entirely for his own films. And I think that's the... We're both int interested in transcendence and transformation. And there are many themes, I think, that we share. But the way we use them and the links that we go to to express those are quite different. I think that's what the main difference is. There are movies which go a lot further, a lot further than stuff that we can see in this country. Uh, they're not necessarily better movies for that, by the way. I mean, I think you can do an awful lot with suggestion. But once in a while, you do want to cut to a spurting artery, don't you? Well, I do anyway. Well, you can get your fill of spurting arteries next year when Nightbreed opens in the UK.